Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. This is the inside of a paint factory, and it is fascinating. We've got some talented humans and some clever engineering here that are making pretty colors and getting them shipped out to the world. Let's go meet the folks at the Army Painter and see how they do it. Hello, my name is Bo Penstoft. I'm the founder of Army Painter. We started 16 years ago in a barn, and today we have uh, some larger premises. We are uh, making accessories and paint for the wargaming industry, and we have had a lot of growth because of a big hobby community with us. They've grown to about 75 employees, most of whom work at the headquarters in Denmark. The company has been taking some big steps recently to communicate with their customers and to use that feedback to improve their wares. As part of that transparency, they let me in here with a video camera. I think the bottling is really cool, so let's start with that. Hey, I'm Nikolaj. I'm managing the tapping facilities here at the Army Painter. You might know it as bottling, but here at the Army Painter we call it tapping. The bottling is done by robotic assembly lines under the watchful eyes of the taproom staff. It starts with the empty bottles. There's a big hopper here that pours them into this drum. The drum spins, and one by one the bottles fall into this narrow conveyor belt. They come out in a nice little line, but uh-oh. Some of them are top first, and some of them are bottom first. This gadget is a spring-loaded arm with a lasso on the end. The bottom first bottles push it aside and move right through. The top first bottles get snagged by the lasso, and they get tipped 180 degrees. This is pretty neat, but it's just the beginning. Now that all the bottles are facing the same direction, they get tipped right side up. They're gonna stay right side up until they're filled, capped, and labeled. Next up, mixing balls. This module is a recent addition to the machine. It takes four bottles at once and drops steel mixing balls in there. It turns out that having a mixing ball is extremely useful for keeping hobby paint mixed properly. Then, the little line of four bottles gets filled with a precise amount of paint. The paint comes from a big bucket in the back of the instrument. There are four tubes and four pumps between the bucket and the dispenser. Each of the four pumps is controlled independently. They each have a marginally different setting to make sure that the actual quantity that they deliver to the bottles is identical. The full bottles keep moving down the conveyor belt to another compartment in the assembly line. Now, the bottles need caps. At the back of the machine, there's a hopper for the dropper tips. This thing shakes around, and the tips line up and move up the spiral ramp. Eventually, they get past to the next part of the machine. Nearby is the hopper for the bottle caps. The wheel spins, and the caps fall into precise little pockets on the wheel's edge. The caps that are properly seated make it to the top of the wheel, and they're passed to this chute. Here you can see some of the sensors that check to make sure that there are bottle caps in the chute. There are sensors all over this machine, and the computer control system is just as complicated as all these little gadgets. Okay, let's cap some bottles. One by one, the dropper tips get pressed into the top of each bottle and then a bottle top gets screwed on. Victor thinks this step is pretty dang cool. Hello, my name is uh, Victor and I'm a machine operator here at the Army Painter. And today we're doing uh, one of our new speed paints, Carmine Dragon. Next up, labels. The bottles keep moving along the conveyor belt. There's a big roll of labels over here and there's a separate spool that pulls the back off of the sticky tape. The bottles meet the tape, and they spin through some wheels that roll the labels on and press them tight. This is the final step of bottling. From here on out, they're just moving towards a storage box. These particular boxes hold 225 bottles. There's a counter on the conveyor belt right next to the labeler. 225 bottles sounds like a lot, but these boxes fill up fast. With a skilled operator, each machine can fill more than 2,000 bottles per hour. Check out this big pile of finished boxes. I've been focused on the machines because they're neat, but the staff is also really good at their jobs. These folks are constantly on the move, checking that all the hoppers are filled and all the contraptions are working properly. There's a three-month training program to do this job, and those who survive get a diploma. I hung out with a day shift for several hours, and they're good folk. There's also a night shift in this room. The tap room night shift are some of the only folks at the Army Painter who work at night, but apparently they're a force of nature. I've heard legends of Gintz and Yanis who can run two production lines at the same time. Anyway, when I showed up for my tour, 
Victor was filling Carmine Dragon, Yvonne was Caribbean Ocean, and Ugna was Ghoul Green. The batch size for each fill run depends on the demand, but often they'll fill somewhere around 10,000 bottles of one color before they switch to the next color. Here's the paint that the day shift is bottling. This is pre-mixed paint for, for production. This is for, for one shift of bottling. Um, we have four different colors here, ready to be, to be tapped. Yeah, but we can do a lot more. Now these speed paints had been mixed previously, and I didn't get a chance to see them made. But I'll show you some more paint mixing here in a bit. The buckets of paint get shaken up, run through a filter, and then they're ready to pour into the filling machine. To switch colors, the four tubes get put into a bucket of clean water, and water gets pumped through the system until it runs clear. Today, the team was bottling speed paints, which are very liquidy. They clean out of the tubes faster than a thicker acrylic paint, and much faster than something like a metallic paint. Apparently, those take a while to wash out. Anyway, a blast of air dries the tubes, and then the four clean tubes get placed into a brand new color. By chance, all three operators ended up having a color change at about the same time. Yvonne got Purple Swarm, Ugna got Blue, and Victor got Warrior Skin. Let's leave these folks to keep bottling paint and go check out the packaging lines. To get there, we needed to pass through a big ol' warehouse. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Annette and uh, I'm just packing uh, some sets for a distributor in uh, Denmark. Hi, I'm Mantas. I'm today preparing stuff... <laughs> stuff! <laughs> Hi, I'm Mantas. I'm today moving produce to another warehouse. <laughs> there are raw materials in here, bottled paints, and complete products ready to get sent to distributors. Right now, the warehouse also has a ton of these giant wooden crates filled with plastic trays. This is a sub-assembly for the new speed paint set. Each box set gets one tray of each type. Here's a team packing up the plastic trays. The four of them are cranking through and getting ten different colors into each tray. The speed of the conveyor belt is adjustable. This looks pretty fast to me, but apparently they often have an extra person in the line and they turn it up even higher. I asked about errors, and they assured me that it's easy to see if a tray has any duplicates. Each person in the line also has a role in double-checking the people before them. Now once they're filled, the crates of trays get wheeled out to a bigger assembly line where the cardboard boxes are built, filled, and shrink-wrapped. So hello, my name is Emil, and I work here at the, the Army Painter. I work at the assembly line, as you can see behind me. And uh, what we're doing here is that we, uh, yeah, we pack all of the different kind of stuff, all the different kind of items we have, both tough basing and different kind of paint set. So, yeah, for example, we're packing the new Speed Paint Maker 2.0. And uh, right now I'm thinking I would like to show you how we are making the new combo set. Okay? The efficiency of this line is pretty cool. Build the box. Trays, trays, trays. Printed material, box top and shrink wrap. On the other side of this, fresh boxes keep rolling out, and they get packed up for distribution. At the time of this filming, these Megaset boxes were up for pre-sale, and it was all hands on deck to get these paints bottled, packed, and ready to go. For me, it was an extra treat to see them packing speed paints in this video, because I was a beta tester for some of the early formulations of these paints. International paint testing was a bit of a logistical challenge, but overall, I think that opening up to outside feedback was a phenomenal move. The beta testers were able to give some useful critiques, and I think we had a real impact on making the final product better. Watch It Paint It and Dana Howell both cooked up some great new colors that are coming in a further expansion to this line. Now as a chemist, my interest was in learning how things worked. I really wanted to be in the room where the formulation happened. Well, I finally got there. This is the point of origin for new products. Hello, I'm Thomas. I'm the painter here at uh, the Army Painter. Um, we just uh, finished the latest project of Speed Paint, where I did the formula. Um, currently, we're working on some other exciting stuff that I can't reveal right now. I can't tell you. <laughs> Unfortunately. Thomas is a great painter. 
and he's one of the main architects of Speed Paint. Thomas's cave is next to the marketing team. My name is Lasse, and I'm the photographer here at uh, the Army Painter. And, and what I do here is um, I take all the uh, photos of uh, the nice uh, painted miniatures that we do for the boxes, um, do product photos, and I do all the uh, videos we do for social media as well. So right now, I'm working on uh, making a, uh, a giant Speed Paint complete set for the new Speed Paint uh, range. The graphic designers are down here too. All right, so uh, my name is Dick. I'm a graphic designer at the Army Painter. And uh, other than so me, I usually work with Game Master and I've created these boxes that are coming out. Uh, some of them are already out. Uh, do a lot of the printing stuff, etc. cetera. Um, all things considering Game Master, really. Okay, let's go make some paint. This is the secret sauce, so they aren't able to tell us everything, but even just the basics are pretty neat. One way to make a new color is similar to what you do at the hardware store when you're painting your house. Pick a color from a book of swatches and get the color code. Put some paint medium into a paint mixer. Enter the color code, and a combination of pigments will be dispersed into the medium. Production batches of paint are much larger, but this is a good size for testing and recipe development. The pail gets shaken up for three minutes, and now we have some fresh paint. The Army Painter has an industrial mixer here loaded up with 16 concentrated pigment pastes. By mixing these in different combinations, they have access to pretty much any color that they need. Some colors can be obtained in multiple different ways, and that's where a lot of the skill comes in. The bases that they use are proprietary. The bases paint without the colors. Acrylic resin, water, and some other stuff like co-solvents for flow and dry time. Another ingredient that can be pre-mixed into the base is white pigment, titanium dioxide. This is a way to increase the opacity of the paint. These two yellows that we mixed have the same amount of colored pigment, but the base for one of them had more white. This makes it a bit lighter, it makes it more opaque, and slightly less vibrant. Here's a teal color that we mixed in two different bases. Now chemically speaking, every pigment is different and some are naturally stronger and more opaque than others. Within a single line of paint, there will likely be multiple different bases. On one axis, it's a trade-off between opacity and vibrancy, but there are other features that need to be optimized too. I can't share much of the paint technology with you, but honestly, I was impressed by the amount of access that Army Painter was willing to give us here. This kind of behind-the-scenes look at how stuff works is fascinating to me. Recently, I've gotten into the habit of just asking companies if they're willing to show us around behind the scenes. Sometimes we get lucky, and they say yes. Touring a paint factory is something that I've been wanting to do for a while, and it was only possible because the army painter was willing to open their doors. I showed this video to them ahead of release to make sure that I wasn't accidentally spilling the beans on any trade secrets. Full disclosure, I've never been paid any money by the army painter, but they did buy me a plane ticket to come visit Denmark in February. And of course, they also gave me a box of speed paint ahead of release. Boxing and unboxing, all in one video. My goal with this channel is to get more people to paint minis. Currently, Army Painter is the brand of paint that I can find at my local mall here in America. That means it's the first paint that a lot of new painters will ever use. Army Painter has been growing fast, but the leadership are still people who paint minis and play games. I'm convinced that these folks are earnest about working with the community to improve their product line. I'm happy to have been a beta tester on Speed Paint 2.0, and it was very cool to see it getting bottled. Alrighty, I think that'll just about do it for this time. Thanks so much for watching.